Today is a special event for Voice of the Vet. We're here in downtown Las Vegas to witness the Traveling Vietnam Veterans Memorial Wall. And uh, it's, you walk in here just like I've been to the real wall, it, it, it stops you in your tracks. And you stand here and look at this thing, it's at its height is six feet tall and 300 feet long, and that's half size of the real one. Are there how many how many names almost over a little over fifty eight thousand yeah like fifty eight thousand eight hundred or something like it, that it's it's sobering yeah you know it's one thing to think about it uh, or see pictures of it but when you actually get here and you just see the endless endless stream of names of people who died yeah uh, in Vietnam and it, it's just uh, it's very somber and solemn. It's like the old saying, all gave some, but some gave all. Yeah. And that's uh, more, never more evident than it is right here, looking at this wall. I have two, personally, I have two cousins that are on the wall. And um, I don't know, personally, if I'm ready to see their names. But I lost four uh, relatives during the Vietnam War. Personally, I missed it by five days. They rescinded our orders to go over there at the end of it all and bring back whatever we were supposed to bring back. But, um, you know, I don't know how I even feel about that, to be honest with you. But to see this, like you say, it's humbling and sombering, to yeah. say the least. Yeah. Uh, and myself, I was, uh, I was in high school. It's in uh, 70, 71, and I was on the lottery. I forget exactly what my number was, but it was two something, 260, 270, 280, somewhere around there. And um, they, right before we graduated, or right before I graduated, they, they stopped the lottery. But I had gone up to Philadelphia and did my physical, and you know, I knew I had buddies ahead of me, a year ahead of me or so, that were already went and went there. I wasn't really looking forward to it, and I'm not going to say I wasn't glad when they stopped the lottery, but I would have gone. But I, it, boy, you know, we we talked to people, we've interviewed people, and they said, "Now you were in the service, you you were you were in the service," but they said they say, you know what? Don't feel bad about your number not being picked, yeah, uh, yeah. Or, or not not having that because if I if there was a way that I didn't have to go, you know, it's not something you go and go. Oh, I had a really good time. No, no, no. Uh, well, you didn't run away from it. You went no. and had your physical, yeah. and that means a lot, yeah. you know. In a time like right now, in they told our me country, I le needed to lose a couple of pounds. Yeah, not me. But anyway, um, like right now in our country, the, the division of everything, the uh, purpose of this wall is to bring unity, bring people together. It's called the healing wall. And in just a minute here, we're going to uh, interview a gentleman that's been a volunteer for this wall, the traveling wall, for at least 10 years. Mm. So we're going to find out more. And I think what, what's, what separates this from the other wars is that today, veterans are so honored and respected and thanked and people buy them you know lunches in the airport and things like and that's wonderful and that's how it should be but for some crazy reason that's not the way it was yeah. when our vietnam boys came home yeah that's, yeah, that's, that's true it's a shame it's a shame so this is a, a beautiful way to honor those that did give all so that we could stand here today in this crazy town called Las Vegas and and live our lives yeah absolutely. and be able to do this video yes so we'll uh, we'll pan around here in a moment so that you can see the le the length of this wall it just mm, yeah it's, it's staggering it just yeah, it's amazing ugh. anyway we'll alrighty. be back in a minute with one of the volunteers his name is Dennis and we'll hear more Okay, now we're standing with Dennis. Dennis, what's your last name? Um, my last name is Bless Man, B-L-E-S-S-M-A-N. Bless Man. Is that not great or what? All right, and you've been with this wall or volunteering for what? How it's long? About 10 years now, yeah. I, there are other walls that travel the country besides this one. Uh, this is my favorite one to volunteer at. Yeah, sure. Now, 
Dennis, as you can see by his shirt here, was in the Air Force. So finally, I get to actually have an interview with an Air Force guy. We got Marines and Army and everybody else, which is awesome, absolutely. But Dennis, thank you for taking the time to, oh, to talk with us today. Now, tell us some of the history of this particular traveling memorial. Well, th this is the original traveling wall. Oh, wow. In 1982, when the wall was dedicated in Washington, D.C., John Divot and a couple of his other combat Army veterans uh, we're looking at the wall back there and they said, hey, this is wonderful, but what about the rest of the country? Sure. What about other people who are not going to be able to, to get to D.C. to see the wall? So John borrowed the art, artwork from, uh, from the wall and had it uh, scaled down to half, and this is the result of that. 300 feet long is half. Right. That's amazing. Yeah, and, it's, and it's half the size. It's half the size, but all the nomenclature and names are here. Wow. Everything is here. Wow. Now, I see how there's dots. Um, dividing like groups of names. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Now, since the names are on the wall chronological by their casualty date, the only way to find a name is to look it up in, in our alphabetical directory. Okay. And then you're, you're given the panel number, which is now at the bottom. Okay. And the line number. And in between the big white dots, there's 20 lines that help you count. Oh, okay. All right, nice. Along with that, each name has a little designation by it. There's either a diamond shape or a plus sign. The diamond shape is a confirmed death. The plus signs are the missing. Oh. The, all the missing are accounted for. We just have not found them yet. Oh, wow. See, I did not know that. That's that's good news to, to know for uh, for all of us. Now, so they do what they call a change of status up the wall in Washington, D.C. Uh, usually once a year. If there's been remains recovered, they can be identified. Then they change the plus sign to the diamond. Okay. All right. It's good that, that we can update that like that's that for all of us right. to know. Excellent. Now, you were in the Air Force, which I'm glad to hear. <laughs> um, when were you in the Air Force? I enlisted in the Air Force in August of 1965. Okay. Uh, went to boot camp in uh, Lackland, Texas, where everybody went. Yep. And then I got assigned to uh, Aircraft Weapons School in uh, Denver, Colorado, Lowry Air Base. I went to Mather Air Force Base and uh, work on B-52s, loading nuclear weapons. And then uh, I volunteered to go to Vietnam and uh, arrived in Vietnam in January of 67. Okay. And I was an aircraft uh, load uh, crew guy and, and load crew chief uh, on F-100s while I was there. Nice. How long were you over there? One year. One year. Yeah. And the one tour, one yes, year? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, January 67 to January 68. Okay. Now, how long were you in the service? Until 1969. Four, okay. I just did four years. Okay. Yeah, like so many of us, yeah. I, we did, yeah. Um, it's, you've answered a lot of questions for us already in this short period of time. Dennis, thank you yeah, so much. Is there anything you want to add to? Well, there is one, one oh, quick thing. Here that, we go. Yeah, there, right now, there's 58,318 names on the wall in Washington, D.C., and on this wall. Okay. Now, they do add names to the wall. Now, these are guys who were wounded during their tour of duty in Vietnam and are just now passing away. All right. It's, it's very specific. Those wounds have to cause their death now. I see. Okay. And when they add their names to the wall, since the wall only goes to 1975, All right. they go back in these guys' records, find out when their original casualty date was, and that's where they put their names. Oh, they add them to that, yes. that section? That, that panel. Was, wow. Yeah. That's a lot of work, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and, it's, and it's worth it, though. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's not too bad back there because there's quite a bit of space okay. in between the names. Here, they have a silk screen. They can add the name to the silk screen. Oh, nice. Okay. Wow, well, that's, so that's yeah, great to know. They've added about 370-some names since 19. No kidding. Wow. But that that uh, is kind of on a downward slide. Okay. Now. Sure, now. And yeah, absolutely. We're, we're all getting a little older. <laughs> yeah. Some of us are feeling it every morning when we get out of bed. Yeah, absolutely. But it, it's been it's been an honor, a privilege for me to be able to come and, and volunteer at these things. It's been a healing experience for me. I travel with another Vietnam veteran who was a, a combat medic in Vietnam. So okay. his story and my story are quite a bit different, and uh, we just enjoy doing this. Well, Dennis, again, thank you for your story. Oh, it's an honor and privilege to talk to you. Well, thank you, and very thank much. you for your service. And, and, and continue good luck. Thank you so uh, much.